You are listening to another episode of the Ever Black Podcast, proudly brought to you by Blacklight Art and Design and RW Promotion. I'm your host, Nev. On this episode, we are joined by Opeth guitarist and all-round good guy, Frederick Ackerson, who are about to release their amazing new album, In Court of Venom, on September 27th through Nuclear Blast, ahead of their Australian tour in December. Sorry if I messed up uh, the uh, pronunciation of the album, but <laughs> it was great to have Frederick back on the show uh, to talk about, of course, the record, the trippy album cover, and uh, the Swedish and English versions that uh, uh, that they recorded, uh, Opeth beer, and of course their return down under, because um, Aussies love Opeth, and it's always great to see them as they're probably one of the best live bands around, that's for sure. Uh, you can pre-order the album now and get the new singles Heart and Hand and Dignity, uh, which are amazing, especially that solo, we talk about that. And uh, get your tickets to their tour, which are on sale now for the following dates. Adelaide on Tuesday, the 10th of December at the The Barton Theatre. Perth, Wednesday, the 11th of December at the Astor Theatre. Melbourne, Friday, the 13th of December at the Palais Theatre. Sydney, Saturday the 14th of December at the State Theatre and then wrapping up in Brisbane on Sunday the 15th of December at the Tivoli Theatre. And you can get them now through www.davidroywilliams.com. Uh, all the tickets uh, and info are all on there. All right, before we go into my chat with Frederick, we have to mention that this episode is brought to you by our good friends at Blacklight Art and Design, who are our go-to for all our screen printing needs. They've done all our shirts and hats for Ever Black Media. They've got such a great turnaround. Go check them out at www.blacklightad.com.au. The show is also brought to you by our friends at RW Promotion, who are the best in the biz when it comes to stickers, flyers, banners, badges, and all other promo you need for your band or business. Go check them out at www.rwpromotion.com.au. Also, uh, you can subscribe to the Ever Black Podcast through Spreaker, iTunes Podcast, or YouTube, and we have now started uploading them to our Facebook page. So uh, follow us on the socials, share our stuff. We appreciate it, guys. And uh, leave us a review because that is always uh, super helpful for us too. And uh, we have more interviews on the way, some really cool stuff uh, on the horizon. So uh, stay tuned. All right, here is my chat with Frederick Ackerson from Opeth. Go uh, pre-order the new album now and get your tickets for that tour because it is selling very, very quickly and uh, you're going to want to see them on this uh, tour because it's going to be phenomenal. Horns high, guys. Enjoy. Frederick, thanks for joining us on the show, man. My name's Nev. How are you? I'm good. You're the third interview for today. So it's apparently morning here in Sweden. So I'm sipping on my first cup of coffee and noodling a little bit on the guitar in between the interviews. Oh. <laughs> oh, that's awesome, man! Is it? A, was it nice summer day there? I'm guessing. Yeah, it's about 22 degrees. Nice. It's nice. about the end of the summer now, basically. Oh. Ah, true, true. Well, we're about to go into spring here, which is uh, <laughs> a lot nicer. <laughs> it's going to be that. when we get there and play some shows. It's going to be summer, right? Basically. That's right. Hot as fuck is what we say. <laughs> yeah, but you probably, you've been down here then anyway, haven't you? Yeah, yeah but you know, I'm man. back properly in Perth. Yeah. Try to win, oh. try to surf once, and apparently there was a white shark nearby, and I didn't realize. <laughs> Scary as fuck, man. Even for me living here, that is maybe you just weren't delicious. Who knows? Oh, yeah, well, yeah. Well, it was a bit further <laughs> out. It wasn't close. It probably couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, just... I wasn't delicious <laughs> enough. Apparently, <laughs> just tell yourself that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, man, it, it seems it's all happening for Opeth right now with your new album in Corda Venenum. Is that how you pronounce it? I think so. I, I'm trying to figure out that out myself. I'm not a Latin expert either, so but it sounds right. Let's go with that. Well, Okay, we'll roll that. Well, that's coming out on September 27th through Nuclear Blast, and uh, an Australian tour coming up in December as well. You're are you you're not on tour right now, but you're about to head off, and, are you? Yeah, we'll start the tour for the album at the end of October in the UK. So mm. we do a European run, uh, which ends in Denmark basically. So we and then we'll do the Scandinavian gigs in the beginning of Janu- January instead. So we're going off to, after that, we do play in India and uh, mm. a couple of gigs in China and 
two shows in Japan and then we're going to Australia. So that's the last we do for this year. But we, we've done a lot of festivals now and we have the last mm. one this upcoming weekend in Las Vegas called Psycho Vegas, which is going to be pretty cool. That's actually going to be amazing because uh, you're, you're headlining the Sunday night and then Correct. you've the night before you've got the original Misfits with Danzig. Correct. They Are you going to everything. watch that? Yeah, because we get in there the afternoon the day before, so we're going to be able to watch it. That's incredible. Man, what, what a weekend. Mate, you, you got it made, mate. That's for sure. Yeah, that's going to be fun, you know. It's crazy plays Vegas as well. All the gambling, it's very artificial, but... It's a small dosage of us a couple of days. It's pretty fun. Oh, it's going to be a blast for you, man. Well, of course, as we mentioned, the new Opeth album is incredible. I've been spinning it. And I believe you guys were actually going to uh, be taking a break. Were you, were you shocked? Did he just call you up out of the blue at 2 a.m. in the morning screaming, you got to hear this stuff, man? I went down to the Rails room because I'm usually there playing some guitar and trying out amps and gear and stuff. And then he, I heard him sitting there. I was like, what the hell? He was supposed to take a break. He's been talking about this break, but I guess he can't then. Mm. <laughs> so he got the right the writer's poison, or what do you say? So he started in November 2017, maybe, or December. And then mm. he was like the beginning of next year, 2018. He was extremely productive there for three months and wrote the majority of everything, basically. And I could tell the first song I've heard was the last track of the album, the uh, all things will pass and uh, I got goosebumps at the, at the end and I, then I figured wow he's really onto something now you know and then he asked me to put on some solos and that was fun it makes you a bit more involved you know yeah absolutely I mean which song was it it's uh, Dignity the, so- the solo at the start of Dignity is that, is that you? yeah that's me so that solo is fucking incredible. Well oh, done. Oh, thanks, man. Appreciate it. It's a bit different because you have to play over the chords. You can't mm. just be in the same key because it's a, it varies in the the keys. I think uh, maybe the chords. Yeah, you have to play basically over the chords. So when I did, I just wrote down the chords on the paper and then improvised, and that came up by accident. <laughs> so I was uh, I was a bit lucky and I had to relearn it because it was very improvised in the demo. So I had to relearn it and try to pimp it up a little bit mm. for the actual recording. But thank you. Gave, gave me goosebumps, man. Like, oh, yeah. yeah that's it's, the goal. It's a, so I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> oh, mate, it's, it's incredible. And, of course, I mean, the album title itself means, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Poison in the Tail. Yeah. Is that right? What's the meaning behind that? How's that poison tie in the, the, rest end. Of the album? <clears throat> I'm not really sure, but I have a theory about it. It's like uh, if you look at the poison as a good thing, Mm. something you want it's a pretty complex album to go through and the last song all things will pass as it's called you have this kind of rewarding ending very pompous and melodic chorus maybe that has something to do with it you know i'm not it's... sure actually but that's my theory that's a reward but it could also be like a, a negative meaning mm. <laughs> the poison is at the end you die <laughs> something <I don't> know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that's a reward who knows it's it's so complex could be man. a reward as well yeah watch out for the spider stuff <laughs> big triumphant uh and mate it's it's a very complex like all your albums actually <laughs> they're all very complex and uh, i guess that what keeps you you spinning them because you always find new things new meanings and talking about meanings the album cover as well with the house and the horses and what's going on there what how does that represent the album well it's basically the band guy standing in each window i got a pipe in my mouth and yeah it's pretty fun axe or drum got an entire wine bottle i think and um, <laughs> I, I really love the calories i think it's the best one of the best really and there's, yeah. there's a little fun detail in the album cover you know there's a, a little fountain with a little urinating boy <laughs> that's actually our manager's face put in that little statue <laughs> which i think did he know really about funny. that it, did he, he, know about he that? got to know and we thought he's going to be pissed off because it was a bit of a booing to to watch him but but he was proud and happy about it so that was good <laughs> that's good well, at least the well then you have like a demon face and the, the house mm. is located on the demon's tongue kind of thing and yeah 
It reminds me a little bit of King Diamond cover, actually, like um, Abigail. Yeah. Uh, but it's different. It's more details in this one. I, see, I think Travis Smith outdone himself on this artwork. It's, we're very happy with it. You know, when you were younger, you bought Maiden albums. You, you like to mm. look at all these details. And I think this one has a bit of that vibe to it. You can look in the garden in the back and you see some strange figures here and there. It has a lot of cool details. I don't know sure what's does, up man. with the guy sitting in the, in the horse wagon there. His face is kind of demonish, demon-like. <laughs> so, yeah, it has some cool details, you know. I love it, man. I, I, can't, I can't wait to get a copy of it on vinyl so I can sit there and spin it and uh, look at it, trip out for a bit. <laughs> yeah, that's going <laughs> to look great on vinyl, I think. <laughs> oh, yeah. Of course, there are two versions of the album, one in Swedish and the other in English. Were you guys nervous about doing that? Did you feel like it was a bit of a risk? I think that idea was something that was a driving force to Michael, that he, he had wanted to write it in Swedish, made him eager to continue, he told me. So the album is, in a way, very written in Swedish, lyrically wise. Like we didn't, uh, Michael didn't demo the songs in English that was done in the studio. When I first heard it, I was like, "Are we only going to do it in Swedish? Are you sure about that?" And then we talked about it. And we, yeah, well, of course, we should do it an English version as well because the majority of the people that's interested in opera doesn't speak mm. English, uh, Swedish, you know. But I think it was very, for the vibe of the album, the way it came out, it was very important for Michael that he wrote it in Swedish. And he told me it was more challenging to write in Swedish than English because he had to de- dig deeper into the topics to make it interesting. And uh, luckily enough, the translation between going from Swedish to English wasn't as difficult. I mean, if you de- directly translate some sentences, it could be very wrong. But most mm. of them actually worked out pretty good. You didn't have to change too many words. You know. I, I actually like the Swedish version. I can't speak uh, a word of Swedish, but um, I, I just I like the poetry of it. That's you know? interesting because a lot of uh, non-speaking uh, speaking journalists I was talking to is on the same path a little bit there. It's really interesting. Yeah, I like as I said, I really like the poetry of it. Like you know, I, it's like something something I don't understand that makes me want to. Dig okay, deeper. Cool. You know what I mean? Like it makes me want to actually translate stuff myself and, and, and see if I'm right. You know, it's a bit of a bit of a mission for me. You know, something I can like when you listen to Eros Ramazzotti and sings in Italian, you like don't understand a word. You wanna to... I'm just joking. <laughs> uh, well, I, awesome. mean, it's, I mean it's big hits with uh, some and some like Italian, right? Like pop hits mm. which you don't understand a word, but still people it's a mega hit. It's strange. Yeah, it's a, it's okay. Well, a, a metal example would probably be Ramstein. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, definitely. That's a good one. There's another song on there next, uh, next of Kin, which kind of reminds me. It's got a bit of a Soundgarden down on the upside vibe to it. Was that was that intentional? Love that album. Well, it's it's a D drop guitar wise. It's just dropped to D, so it's a bit heavier. Mm. It's a bit doomy, I think. But I, I see where you. What do you what do you mean? I love that album with Soundgarden, by the way. Maybe oh, the verses, yeah, favorites. they're a bit like that. I, yeah, you're right. We didn't. Yeah. Nobody's mentioned that before, and we didn't talk about Soundgarden. But uh, I think you're onto something there. It wasn't um, intended to be like that, I think. But um, I, I love that band, and everybody in the band loves them as well. So no problem with that. But I think that maybe it's crept in there a little bit. It's a it's the Doomier track. It's a the character mm. is, is is the second word for hangman or something. It's it's the executioner. It was called in Swedish from the beginning. It's pretty dark lyrics. It's pretty dark yeah. lyrics overall on the album. Actually, it usually is. <laughs> the, there's an Opeth beer now as well. Uh, is that going to be available in Australia? Do you know? Well, it's just, we mean uh, the drummer Martin Axenrop. We went down to a brewery here in Sweden. Uh, mm. And this brew company called Heavy Met Ale. Um, not metal, but Met Ale. Ale, I like it. <laughs> so they were, had a cool approach because they used the album covers on the beer and you have a QR code so you can scan in that and you listen to the, to the beer you're drinking basically with that album cover. So we did one Pilsner type, mm. crispy Pilsner, and we did one 
IPA, which was uh, Sorceress, and the Pilsen was Heritage album. And then we did the Red Rocks live album. We did we did a red uh, red ale for that. So it's a bundle of three different beers, which you can buy in a little package. I think you might be able to order them from Sweden, but it's probably quite expensive to ship. You know, it's difficult to. But I know last time we were in Australia, we could find the, find the other beer we did. So I'm if gonna you have to order it. it you could contact uh, Heavy Met Ale. You can just Google it. I'm going to do that, actually, because I've got to think, like, I have to, you know, I've tried your, um, you know, your Iron Maiden beer, you know, the uh, yeah, <laughs> the Trooper. Uh, love Iron Maiden, not really a fan of the beer. And the No Effects one's way worse than that. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm actually, I, I, I think with the care that you guys put into your music, that your beer is actually going to be pretty good. So uh, going to try yeah, and would happen with it because we, it's a microbrewery, it's unfiltered, you know, it's a... Um... It's mm. a craft beer. And um, the way they sell it, it's in this box. You get the, all the three beers in the box. It's kind of a nice package with album covers. And they want to promote the music. So I think the la- this beer company has a really cool attitude. They also run all the beer. It's a, co- it's a fest- metal festival here in Sweden. They uh, take care of all, of, of all the beer brewing. And I think they sold almost all the beers soon. So they will be a, there will be a new batch. So... And we're yeah, talking about maybe doing some new beers later on if, for different albums. So it's it's an ongoing process. It's just more I'm of totally the fun kidding. of it. It's not something we you know make money off really. Yeah. It's more of but we get some free beers. That's fantastic. <laughs> That's what's important. That's what's important. And of course, uh, as we mentioned before, you're coming back here in December. And I think the last time you were here, you played was it Sydney Opera House? Was that last time? Yes, that's correct. Amazing. Yeah, so now we play that's... these uh, theatre, Palais Theatre. No, that's in Melbourne. Um, we're playing the State Theatre, which mm. we, never, we haven't played there before. So uh, it's a lot of new venues on this run, which is fun. It's always nice to frame the gigs differently when you come back to, to different cities, if you have the possibility. Absolutely, man. And, and uh, of course, I mean, Opeth have had such a very strong connection with Australia. I mean... You guys keep coming back every album, and that makes us happy. I mean, do you do you find that that song has crept into the songwriting in some way? Has there been any tracks that have been a direct result of your connection with Down Under? Maybe. I mean, Michael used to go to Australia quite a lot. He was yeah, the girlfriend from Australia for a while, so he was mm. traveling back and forth a lot a few years back. And maybe there's a, definitely on the previous album, Sorceress, I think. Could be some uh, influences from, you know. I guess you, if you write songs, you take influences uh, subconsciously from experiences in life. Yeah. Okay? So, yeah, absolutely. You know, we we're, we're very happy about the support, and we love to, to play for you guys. It's uh, always a big treat, really. It's one of our favorite uh, territories, definitely to go to. Luckily enough, this time we get to fly from Japan instead of from Sweden, so the travel won't be as exhausting. <laughs> That's good, man. And I, I haven't seen, I haven't got all the dates in front of me, but hopefully you get some some time to chill out. And thanks again for joining us on the show, man. New album comes out through Nuclear Blast on September 27, and we'll see you and the boys in December. Until then, stay safe on the road and have a blast, brother. Thank you so much. Looking forward, and hope you will enjoy the new album and. See you soon, I hope.